Hello and welcome to the final poem in part one of our reading of the Metrical Dinkenicus, The Lore of Place Names, with myself, Laura O'Brien of the Irish Pagan School. This is a labour of love that I am going through to make sure that the original lore and texts are accessible for people and free for anybody who can't read them for any reason or can't process them if they're reading. People learn in different ways. So I want to make sure that all of this, I always talk at the Irish Pagan School in all of my classes about going back to the lore. So I am putting my money or my time, I suppose, where my mouth is and making sure that people actually have access to the original lore. So that is the mission that we are on here. And uh, we are going through the Edward Gwynn translation of the Metrical Dinhenicus. Again, that translates as the lore of place names, more or less. Dinhenicus does. Metrical is um, a particular version of the Dinhenicus. There are many different versions. We are on part one of uh, the Metrical Dinhenicus. So we are going today to poem six, which moves on from Tara, the hill of Tara, uh, where we have been through poems one, two, three, four, and five already. So if you want to know all about Tara, go back to the start. The playlist uh, link is down below or should, should have popped up on your screen or should pop up at some point and uh, certainly will be at the end. And you can come back and uh, go through all of the other stuff. But we're in Achel today. So Poem six is Achel, which confronts Chever. The youths from Evan loved her. She was mourned when she died. The white bride of Glan, son of Carved. The daughter of Carpri perished. The daughter of Fedelm, Nachruhak, from grief for Urk, which fills the stanza, who was slain in vengeance for Cuchulain. Conal Kernock brought the head of Urk to Chever about the hour of Turka. Bad was the deed was done by him, the breaking of the cold heart of Achel. The mound of Finn, the mound of the Druids, the mound of Krejna, cheek by cheek, the mound about which was fought the famous fight, the mound of Urk, the mound of Achel. The nobles of Ulster came around Concor of the champions. They held races bright and pure. For Achel, which confronts Chever, the mound of Urk, it was no narrow work, on the hill south of Chever. Urk, it is there his time came, the comely brother of Achel. Brothers were Finn from cold Alend, and Alel from stern Crochan, of Carpranea from Chever in that country, whose noble daughter Achel was. The mound of the Druids, south of it, lay Chever of the Kings, the royal hold. East of Chever yonder, it is where, it is there Achel died. It is there the woman was buried, the daughter of the high kings of the Gaels. For her was raised this wrath on that spot. There did Achel meet her death. The six women that were the best, that were in the world after Mary, the mother of God, are Maeve, Sive, Sarach, who adorn stanzas, Urk and Emer and Achel. The squire of Carpra, Neafer, Ihu, the fierce champion of the Gaels, attempted to have one of his children by the maiden, by Achel. I give sure testimony thereon to the daughter of Carpra, that a stolen hour with her was not to be had in that place. Achel surpasses all damsels in beauty. I pray the son of God who brought decay on Maeve Lecherig, on Maeve Jerig, on Sive, on Sarach, on Fawn, on Garb, on Urk, on Achel, that there may be a place in high heaven for Kinnage E. Hartican, who knows the rule of rhyme for every verse. It is he that goes to and fro in Achel, never set foot on earth, one that surpasses her in herds nor horses. Never was bred there in Chever, a woman that surpassed Achel. 
Boy, take my horse in thy hand. Let none come to trouble me. The gale and the gall are on the foray. Swift are their horses across Achel. The place where our horses are, there was a wood through it on every hand. The land of the poet Maine the indolent. It was called from him before it was named Achel. The wrath of pure Conora endures. The wrath of Carpri endures. Essa endures not, here or elsewhere. Urk endures not, nor Achel. Fogartok was at Din Rig. He was a king of Fola, with doughty deeds. The Gael and the Gaul knew the valour of that single hero at Achel. Pleasant the folk, brisk and cheerful, the clan of Kirnoch, son of Dirmich. They have slain hosts till now, round the cold flanks of Achel. Of Liv, of Achlea, the hundred strong, who gained the kingship in Benj Etar. I bore off him as price of my song, a horse of the horses of Achel. There came to Chever of the kings, column kill, free from sorrow. By him a church is founded there, on the hill where Achel was buried. So this is a site, a mound, um, that was raised for a woman, um, which confronts Tara, so obviously is very close to Tara. And um, the setting of the story of the tale seems to be um, in the Ulster saga, because we have mentions, obviously, of Conal Kernock, of Fidelm, who was the one who came up in the Tawn and um, predicted Maeve's bloody battles ahead. She was a druid. And uh, Concord, the King of Ulster, and Maeve comes up a couple of times, and Alil from Cruachan as well, who was Maeve's husband at the time of the Tawn. And there is a mention of many other um, women who would be contemporaries of Maeve as well. So obviously all of that is going on. Maeve Lecherig here is not Cruachan Maeve, she's the Tara Maeve. Um, and perhaps Maeve Jerig then would be um, the Crochon Maeve. That is the first time that I've actually seen two references to Maeve in the same sentence like that. So that's a new one for me and an interesting one that I will look into in the future in my studies of Maeve. I have written a whole book on Queen Maeve um, if you're interested and uh, you can get that online. So yeah, all of this kind of goes down through and um, there is a lot of Christian references, as you can see through it, uh, and these would be later than the Ulster cycle. You know, if the Ulster cycle was set, if we had to time it, there's debate, obviously, um, it could have all just been made up in the medieval period. We don't know for sure, but it is likely that it is a recording of an earlier native tradition, a pre-Christian tradition um, from the Ulster cycle and earlier than from the mythological cycle with the Tuatha Dé So I do go into all of this in my classes at the Irish Pagan School, the timelines, the story cycles, all of that. Um, there is a whole um, timeline of Irish history class on there. And um, you can you can definitely learn more through the classes there. But if you're interested, obviously, if you want to pursue your knowledge um, or you can stay here with us on YouTube and go through the playlist. So we're going to leave it there for today. And next time we will be moving on to part two of the Metrical Dinhenicus, the lore of place names. Uh, the Edward Gwynn version, which is what we're doing. Make sure that you catch the playlist. It'll be linked here at the end and it's linked below as well. Okay, it's longer full and I will see you in the next video.